today. From U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. This is the NFL on EA Sports. ourselves at the stadium that played host to Super Bowl 52, the wondrous U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Indianapolis Colts and the Minnesota Vikings. Two teams more than ready to get this one started. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. And this will go as a touchback. And they will begin things at the 25. The Vikings offense coming out for the first time. And in his fifth season leading this crew, coming off his third career Pro Bowl nod, Kirk Cousins. Not bad for a fourth-round draft pick. Well over 100 career starts now. And the chemistry with his top targets, really on point. They spend a lot of time in practice and after practice making sure the routes are run well, and he knows exactly where they're going to be on the field. And when they get open, he delivers. Play action, Cousins. That's to Dalvin Cook, his running back. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 11 yards there on the first play from scrimmage. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, Hey, we got our bike. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. Throwing his Cousins. Open man. He's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. So the completion good for six yards. And now we've got a third and four. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Cousins. Open here, Adam Thielen. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. And Cook was fighting for it, but I don't think he got there. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on to punt for Minnesota. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. They decide against going for it on fourth and one, maybe to the dismay of their offense. 
offense, but hey, a nice consolation prize down inside the five. Nice consolation prize indeed. So maybe the offense is upset, but they show confidence in their defense by punting it away. As Indy's offense takes the field for the first time, we take a look at Matt Ryan, top 10 all-time in passing yards, playing his first career season outside of Atlanta. So this is where we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball, run it inside, everyone cover it, just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you've really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run pass option. You get the sense the next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? This one completes Alec Pierce. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. And that's a much needed completion right there on third down. Really a sigh of relief, isn't it? They're backed up deep. You know they don't want to give the ball back to the other guys a great field position. They needed that throw. That completion, that first down. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. And that's caught left side by Mo Ali Cox. Just a gain of a couple there. And it's second down. Here's Ryan. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And he'll be dropped at the 36. It's a good gain of 18 on a play that originated back at the 18. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 36. Here's Ryan. He'll find Paris Campbell, that's complete. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. Well, they clearly wanted to come out, Charles, and be aggressive throwing the football, and they've been pretty efficient along with that aggressiveness. He's now 4-4 four four on this opening drive. Yeah, and that's led to a fresh set of downs. I like what he's doing back there. You can tell he's at ease, feels good about what he's doing. And I think if I'm the play caller, I'm reading that, I'm continuing to let him throw the football. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Not a big run, not an explosive run, but they've held the ball for plenty of plays on this drive. They're just trying to impose their will on the defense right now. Throwing on second and eight. Ryan over the middle, hauled in by Campbell. And the Colts are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the nine. Here we go now on first and goal. They'll run here with Taylor. And he's going to ball his way down to about the one-yard line. A good run, eight yards there, and it'll be second and goal. That's a great run right there on first down. Didn't quite get into the end zone, but now you've set yourself up for at least two, maybe three more shots from close range. Second and goal from the one. They go play action now. Ryan. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Mo Alley Cox from a yard out. And the Colts go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that makes the score 7-0.
Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 28 yards the game there on the catch and run. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 47. Now Cousins. And his throw is going to be incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Cousins throw complete to his receiver, Thielen. And they're going to move it down inside the 25. Second down at four. Cousins gives way to Cook. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. And that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. On third and one, here's Cousins. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. The kick by Joseph is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. you got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. A gain of four last play. They double that here and get eight. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field. Ryan hit, and he lost the football. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. 
in their locker room. They've got a sign that says defense wins championships. And Charles, they pointed to that this week, said that has to be us looking good early. I like how you saw that because of the bold letters, right? You saw the emphasis that they place on that and what they believe in. And for them, it's every single snap. So it's not just a matter of getting to the quarterback and knocking the ball free. They're trying to read when that ball's going to come free. As soon as those hands separate to throw the ball, they want to be there and have a chance to knock it out. That his throw is incomplete. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. That's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Kirk Cousins on the connection to Justin Jefferson. And the Vikings have taken the lead. Joseph connects on the extra point, and the lead is now 10 to 7. So that drive, four plays. And it was all capped off by Justin Jefferson's touchdown reception. This taken in at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. Charles, you got to think the number one goal here is ball security. Remember, last drive they coughed it up, then they allowed the touchdown, and now they're trailing on the scoreboard. Boy, the way you described it makes me think that that one actually hurt them three times. The fumble cost them potential points. Then they watched their opponent get a touchdown off of the fumble. And third, they lost the lead as a result. Really tough sequence right there. I don't think coaches have to remind them to hold on to the football. They've just got to find a way to get it done. Meanwhile, Ryan's throw pulled in by Woods. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. He's got Granson, his tight end. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. 10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. throw again now that's into the hands of Mo Alley Cox the tight end two yards on the pickup there and this will wind up being a third and three I like the thought process I like the design but I think he may have waited a little too long to spot his man because if you're going to run that drag route you've got to put it on him and let him turn up field instead he waits until his receivers too close to the sideline and they don't get the yards after the catch it's a first down following a gain of three they had yet to run the ball at all on this drive, but third and short, definitely was a great time to dial one up. They go play action with Ryan. Steps away. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And able to get about three as he's taken down right at the 20. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. And he is going to have a Colts first down, and he's going to have it by plenty. Able to get eight yards there on third and two. Well, partner, this drive has been a model of efficiency. They've done everything they've wanted to, and the defensive guys, they've got to be getting frustrated. They can't figure out how to get off the field. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. And now Ryan not happy about either their formation or the play call. Whatever the case, he's going to call a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter.
Now Ryan on first down. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And the Vikings are going to take over at their own 13-yard line. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 13. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Over the middle complete. That's Osborne. And he's dropped just shy of the 25 at the 24. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. A first down throw for Cousins. Swinging this out wide here for Cook. So no gain on the play, and that's going to bring up second down. Cousins. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. From the 39, Cousins. He's got his tight end over the middle, T.J. Hawkinson. A gain of eight there on the play, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. They run again on first down, Cook. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. Yannick Ngakwe, just as hard to say his name as he is to block. He's there in on the stop that time. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Again, it's Cook. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. The Vikings on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and nine. And this is going to be incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. For the Colts now, they're ready to get the football back as the offense comes out here, Charles. Remember, they threw the interception last time out, but they were moving the football down the field. Looked like they were going to have a sustained drive that ended in points, but then the pick ensued. And because of that, there's no way you can call the last drive a success. Yes, there are things to build on because they found some play calls at work. Now, they've got to build another drive and find a way to avoid the turnover the plague did on the last one. On second down, it's Taylor. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. 45 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. On first and 10, it's Ryan. He'll get this one to Pittman. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Play action, Ryan. Pittman with a great grab. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A good pick up there, 26 yards. That is one heck of a catch right there. Got his eye on it the whole way and able to make the grab one-handed. Very nicely done, and for a nice chunk of yardage, too. Get 
It's a jet sweep. This is Pittman. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Play action. It's Ryan. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked by Cameron Bynum. And the Vikings are going to have it here as they'll start at their own seven. Definitely not the ideal time to see that mistake, partner, because this is still a one-possession game, and that's at least a field goal that just vanished with that turnover. Now, pressure's on defensively to prevent that pick from turning into points for the other side. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Cousins now. And oh, he coughs up the football near his own goal line. And this will be scooped up in the end zone. The defender gets there, and it's a touchdown. But once that ball was loose, the question was, would this be two or would it be six? It's six. The defense able to pounce on it. And for the offense, the training didn't really kick in, did it? Once that ball comes loose, you've got to get on it, make sure that you recover it, or make sure you punch it out of the end zone. Anything but give it to the defense to score a touchdown. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And the lead is now 14 to 10. So not only the cough up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And they'll be looking to start fresh. Just a moment ago, they were backed up, coughed up the football, and then saw it go the other way for six points. I just wonder, partner, sometimes they put such an emphasis on things. And you know in that situation, as they ran out there, they were told, take care of the football, don't cough it up. And sometimes that's the last thing you hear, and that's exactly what you do. Bobby Okereke making that tackle. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. They run it again with Cook. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. On third down, Cousins. And almost, but not quite, needed 10. He got nine. Fourth down. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Colts take it to field again, running back Jonathan Taylor at center stage. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter, been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, he really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Off the play fake, here's Ryan. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, 
That worked quite well for the defense. On third down, Ryan. That one finds Pierce right side. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. They're going to hurry back to the line now. From the 45 on second down, Ryan. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Look at this, a tight end carry. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as he'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. for Woods and that is incomplete one thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air and I'm not sure that he didn't but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs running straight ahead Taylor and he'll get it down on the play to the 37 and they're going to speed things up here Able to find his man, Woods. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 26. Now it's Ryan. Going to throw deep for the end zone. Got a man. It's Pittman, and he holds it in for the Colts touchdown. A great play there. 26 yards. And the Colts will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. And that's certainly an important score right there because they gave themselves a two-score cushion heading towards halftime. Now you got to force the other team out of their comfort zone, and it changes the way you approach the second half as well, how you want to do things on offense. Yeah, I believe they buzz down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. After you and play. So take away the touchdown there, as that's going to be ruled an incomplete pass. Throwing again on second down. Ryan. And he's going to go down here. A sack. They push him back to the 34. Well, that sack backs Ryan and the Colts up a bit here, facing a third and long. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And yet again, Ryan is intercepted. And the Vikings are going to take possession here at their own six-yard line. Likely time for one final snap as they start out first and 10. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. So we reach halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, due to time constraints, we move you forward in today's broadcast to the beginning of the third quarter. 
Joseph now to kick this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. Matt Ryan and the offense heading back onto the field. And it was somewhat of a strange first half. He threw three interceptions, yet you look at the scoreboard, they've got the lead. So you know what I think he did at the half? He stood up in front of the team, especially in front of the defense, and said, thank you. Appreciate what you've done. You guys have picked me up in a big way. And guess what? I'm going to get back to being who I am, which is pretty darn good. Let's go play the second half. That is caught. Michael Pittman with it. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Five catches for him in that first half, and that's number six that we just saw, and also a first down. From the gun, it's Taylor. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. The last run got a couple. here, second and eight. The Ryan's throw into the hands of Pittman here. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 39. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now it's Ryan. A quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. On the handoff, this is Taylor. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive as this is third and ten. Now Ryan. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. And the Vikings are in great shape here as they take over at their 46-yard line. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and ten at their own 46. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And they'll get this just to the 47. One-yard gain. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Cousins now to throw on first down. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Throwing again on second and ten. Cousins, open man is Osborne. He's got it. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. to throw Cousins setting up the screen for Cook and they'll work this down inside the 30. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game and there he picks up another first down whatever they saw going into this one they've been able to capitalize on it and no adjustment has been made to take it away and he'll just get rid of it the goal is certainly to try and make a big play happen and climb back into this game, but you have to be careful. If you overdo it, you could turn it over and hurt your team. Again, it's Cousins. His throw incomplete. The intended target, TJ Hawkinson. And that'll make it third down. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. First down, here's the run with Cook. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. That's a gain of six on the first down run. 
Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe it'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. And he'll be stopped about a yard shy of the goal line after a pickup of about three. Third and short yardage, Cousins to the end zone, but it's incomplete. They converted twice on third down that drive already, but couldn't make it a third. We always talk about in-game adjustments. How about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt? Cousins to throw for it on four, and it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth, and that will force a turnover on downs. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, they did throw interceptions on their last two drives, so no surprise at all they decided to start it with a running play. I'm actually a little bit surprised, though, that they got as much out of it as they did. Yeah, decent little gain. Puts them in a pretty good spot for second down. Second down, another run with Taylor. And able to get it across the 10 to the 15. 79 yards for him on the ground now, as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Here's Ryan to throw. Pass complete downfield, it's Pierce. And he'll get this one way up, just shy of the 45-yard line. A gain there of 30 big ones. A very nice job right there, working in the middle of the field, able to create some separation, and then utilize it to not just make the catch, but turn up field once he got the ball in his hands. And he's got it across the midfield strike and into Viking territory. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Again, it's Taylor. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. Now Ryan. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Taylor. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. What would look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. And he's not going to get anywhere close to the marker as he'll stop him well short of the yellow line. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And last time, they...
fourth and goal, rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind him, try to put together another drive. A simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position. We were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow them to get into the end zone. And this time they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Throwing, Cousins. Open man is Thielen, it's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10, as they've got things rolling on this drive. Cousins. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. DeForest Buckner able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Play fake. Cousins. Under pressure, and they got to him again. That's Yannick Ngakwe with a sack. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. They'll look to throw. Throw left side on target to Thielen. They do get 10 back, but still a ways to go on fourth. It's a nice completion and a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds. Because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? We have played three quarters. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? <laughs> Just give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now they'll throw it with Ryan. Catch made here by Campbell. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That one for Indianapolis resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. 
113 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. They'll rifle this one deep right side. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. I remember Coach telling me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL. Corner is like the Autobahn. Everybody just flying by, and these corners have been really busy in this game, although they got it done on the last play. On the last play, yes, but there have been some good numbers put up against him offensively. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I, I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Okay, you and I are sitting up here getting ready to analyze whether they should go for it or not. Did you see the quarterback just point to the sideline and say, uh-uh, everybody back. I've got this call. Well, you knew this side of the field, they're in plus territory, fourth and one. He wasn't coming off the field. No, he wasn't coming off the field, and he wouldn't let the offense go with him at all. He said, we're staying out here, and we're picking this one up. That's some leadership right there. On the handoff, Taylor. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Five yards, now it's third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. On third down, here's Taylor. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. But, partner, the defense isn't going to adjust, and they keep giving them those five, six, seven-yard runs over and over. They're likely to run it the whole way to the end zone. They'll be more than happy to take the yardage available and save some of their other plays in the playbook for another time. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they manage to convert, and that'll keep the drive alive. A solid pickup of five and a very solid fourth down conversion and defensively pure frustration. So the drive stays alive after the fourth down conversion. First and ten inside the 30. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Now a pass dumped off to his running back. And they're going to get this down inside the 20. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Give him three yards there on the first down pickup. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Now a handoff. Taylor with it. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up first and goal. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. And he takes it in for a cold score. Jonathan Taylor taking it in from four yards out. And the Colts have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. Well, that's certainly going to bump up the old win probability index because now it's a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you're taking me into that deep water now. Win probability index. This game's definitely not over. We're not looking at a half percent or something. It's just two scores. But the way that this team has played, to me, what I've seen, they absolutely deserve to win this game. They've been the better team by far throughout. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And the lead now up to 14. So that about as lengthy a drive as you're ever going to see. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. 
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. And now out comes Minnesota. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of scald out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Now this one from about two counties over after the sack. They come up on a second and very long. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, partner guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Complete, Jefferson the target. It'll be a gain of five, and that's going to make it fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And now the football's going to go over, already being placed at the 15-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense. This offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Colts have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Charles, we know that this offense is aggressive. We saw that last drive. They went for it on fourth down, didn't get it. Then they give up the touchdown, so now you feel like they really need to respond here. They certainly do, but let's face it. Sometimes when you take that risk, you understand if you fail, a little more onus goes back on your ball club to try and pick themselves back up. Looking for Thielen, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. Well, time, I mean, certainly not on their side offensively. They had to take some chances, but that interception will further hinder their already slim chance at victory. Yeah, and you're talking about time not on their side, but it certainly is on the defense's side, and they understood that. They knew they had to press it a little bit, and they planned accordingly. And what a benefit for them, able to pick the... And my goodness, another interception. Picked up by the linebacker, Jordan Hicks. And the Vikings are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. And I'm starting to wonder, Charles, if five interceptions, is that the last that we've seen of him? Well, I think that a lot of people hope that's the last they've seen of him in this game, probably including himself. If this were baseball... The manager would have been at the mound already and asked for the ball, and he'd be in there getting a shower. But in football, you might have to go stand on the sideline and watch the rest of it and see if your backup can do any better. Play action now. Cousins, nowhere to go here. He lost the football. 
Second time in this game, Charles, the ball is squirted out from his hands. Luckily, his teammate was there to pounce on it. You're right. Got the lucky bounce, able to retain possession. You know, we often talk about the combine and why do we measure quarterbacks' hands? Is that really a big deal? It's for situations like this. Do you have the hands big enough and strong enough to hold on to the football while being jostled? Oh, a leap, and he will make the catch. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Cousins on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. He's got room at the 30, down to the 10. Touchdown, Vikings. Jalen Naylor, 55 yards. And the Vikings have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Joseph connects on the extra point, and the lead will be cut down to 14. Just a four-play drive that time, and it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And this is going to be taken in by the Colts. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They run once more with Taylor. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, but he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. And things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to their goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. Very short kick. This will be taken by one of the up men. What a performance. All those points put on the board. And, Charles, it wasn't just by the offense. The defense put some points on the board as well. They were solid today. Yeah, it was a complete effort to secure the win. And both sides of the ball made big plays. But how demoralizing is it when the opposing defense can take one all the way back against you? And that was the case here. That really sparked them to victory. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.
from Minneapolis. So long, everybody. Today, from First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio, this is the National Football League. We'll see Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns taking on Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. The folks here, they are bundled up, but they're ready for football as you get a look at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Today, it's an AFC North matchup between the Baltimore Ravens and the Cleveland Browns. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. And this is a game where the defenses, they need to be on their toes because you've got quarterbacks here, yes, that can throw the football, but they can also run it very well, too. Mobile quarterbacks. Remember, for the longest time, they used to tell the quarterbacks, stay in the pocket. We don't want you outside of it at all. Nowadays, that mobility, truly an asset, and people are game planning for it. As a scout told me recently, we are actually working with what the colleges are giving us nowadays. The Baltimore's offense is making its way out for the first time and leading them their quarterback, a guy who is just so electric under center in his fifth season now, Lamar Jackson. The drive will start with an option going left. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. And if you like defensive football, focus on the defensive end on this play. He does everything exactly right. Reads the play and makes sure he spills it for a small gain. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. Isaiah likely the target that time. And it's third down. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. On third down, Jackson. That's taken in by Duvernay. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Miles Garrett, the all-pro, in on the tackle. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now it's Jackson. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. 
That's multiple times now he's tagged them with a big gain with his legs. Really showing off some nice awareness and the ability to correctly realize when he's got a chance to tuck it and go himself. Meanwhile, Jackson's throw is on target to Duvernay. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. And they run the option here on first and 10. Down to the 25. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. That's a really nice play, being able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They'll run here with Edwards. And he gets halfway there from the 6 to the 3 on a gain of 3. Here's where we need to see some tenacity from this defense because they've been pushed right down the field on this opening drive. They've got to find some way to push back, and that's a good first step. And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. Call it a gain of two as they're knocking on the door now. Third and goal. Play action. Now Jackson. Got a man. It's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Isaiah Likely, a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Ravens get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Tucker with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And finishing that drive off was the touchdown grab by Isaiah Likely. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Browns on their way out now for the first time. And we'll also get a look at the player brought in from Houston to run this offense. And that's Deshaun Watson. And he's exactly the man you want in control of your offense. Excellent arm, good zip on the ball, not afraid to use his legs when he needs to. And what he's excelled at doing is making plays when the first read isn't available or when the pressure's about to get to him. Now it's Watson, a bootleg. On the move to his left. And they're able to get this one across the 35 to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. So in this case, you'd think the defense would be collapsing to the left side of the field, and they forced him to his left, so he just tucked it away and picked up some yardage. On first and 10, Watson. The quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating a defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage. If all oh, the ball is out, Watson lost it. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. What part of the went empty set there? No backs in the backfield. All receivers out in the pattern. And in this situation, you know what the quarterback has to do? Act as his own blitz control. Yeah, he's got nobody else there to protect. No him. one else there to protect, which means he's got to get rid of the football and absorb the hit, but not go down and fumble the ball. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Here's Jackson. And that'll be caught by the big tight end, Andrews. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. In danger of squandering their great field position as they come up on a third and seven. 
Throwing is Jackson. And that is incomplete. Right there in coverage. Credit Greg Newsom with getting a hand on it. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So the fumble recovery had him set up in ideal field position, but they can muster only three points out of it. Yeah, when you're able to force turnovers, especially when it results in field position like they had, you really want to make it hurt. Here, they take the field goal. That's definitely not what they were hoping for. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10 nothing early as they've got it first and 10. Looking for Cooper and it's intercepted. And the Ravens are going to take possession of the football. So more problems here in this first quarter. Already two scores down and here they give away the football. And if I'm the head coach, I think it's time to start lighting a fire under some of these guys. Now, you have to do it within your personality. They can't perceive it as fake, but I'd go get after some guys because they don't look ready to play to me. They look flat, uninspired. It's time to get moving. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. But they'll run with a late signee in camp. This is Kenyon Drake. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. From the gun on third down, Jackson. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Tucker's kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. Well, they already had the early lead, and they get the interception, Charles, and now they add three more with the field goal. Yeah, they're in control of how this game is playing out so far. You mentioned the early lead. Now they're expanding on it, getting plays on both sides of the ball. A winning recipe if they can keep this up. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out. A leap and he's got it. He got it. And not much happening there. He's taken down, but a late penalty flag in the backfield. Now this looks like a roughing call. Charles, did I just hear that right? They declined the personal foul. Three yards, they just declined them. And I have to think that the official is thinking to himself, did I just hear that correctly, that you declined that one? All I can think of is that someone on the field got confused. Because they had to, because you're going to take the yard. From the 35 on second down, Watson. This is the tight end, Najoku. 
And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. Out of the gun, Watson. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. So Watson will step away, and out comes Cade York to handle this fourth down field goal try for the Browns. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. York able to send this one through, and they will indeed get on the board here, but still trailing. It's now 13-3. So that kick gives them their first points of the game, CD. And it comes on the third drive, but hopefully for them that's a spark that gets that offense going. Yeah, and I would say if you're the offensive play caller, as you look at your sheet, you're trying to find that part on there that unlocks bigger points. They struggled with a few drives so far, finally got three out of it. How do you find the end zone? That's what he's searching for now. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it. And he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. Well, that's unfortunate because he had a nice run going. But give credit to the defense. They got a hand in the cookie jar there, CD. You have to think about vision. Finding a place to get down after you know you've gotten all you can out of a run. And obviously, ball security is paramount. In today's football, everyone's coming after the rock. You've got to make sure you protect it and protect the yardage you just gained. Gets this to Kareem Hunt, his running back. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. They go up the middle with Chubb, and they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. A shotgun snap for Watson. A quick throw there, going to be batted away and incomplete. You got to give some credit there, able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give himself a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Five yards, now it's third and five. Back to throw, Watson. It's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Donovan Peoples-Jones from 13 yards out. And the Browns are back within a score. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor in effect. Now Cade York for the extra point. And he puts it through there within three. It's 13 to 10. So that drive spanned five plays. And it's capped off by the Browns touchdown. ready and here we go as he sends this one away Duvernay gonna sit on this in the end zone so it'll come out to the 25 the Raven offense set at the line for this next drive last time out they had the fumble that led to the touchdown not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points to Charles but they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession it's certainly been a tough stretch partner for both of those units and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground but an easy way to make it up to them get out there now and get some points on this drive again it's Edwards 
And he'll take this to the 32, a gain of about three. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Jackson looking to throw on third. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Cleveland offense making their way out. A good balance attack for that last touchdown drive they had. Now it's time to see if they can do that again. It really becomes a tale of two play callers, doesn't it? The offensive guy, he's... A he rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Roquan Smith. And he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. So a dangerous pass over the middle into zone coverage, and it bit him hard. And what's really difficult when you throw it in that direction and versus that zone, that means the linebackers have gotten to their spot, gotten their heads back around, and they can see the quarterback and everything in front of them. And they took big advantage of it, went in the other direction. Excellent blocking and picked up a touchdown. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Browns drive about to get started. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago and threw the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage, it'll be back at the 36. Throwing on second and 14. Watson, he'll rifle this one deep right side. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. Another dangerous throw there, partner. I mean, he's already thrown two interceptions here in the first half. I don't know if you want to keep throwing up 50-50 balls and you've had that kind of lack of success. Yeah, absolutely. Very well could have been a third interception in half number one. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They will indeed snap it to Watson. And here's another interception, the third of this first quarter. Tyus Bowser with a pick. And he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. Boy, this defense is circling early. A pick six there, and they are off to the races here this first quarter. And partner, when you get off to a first quarter lead like this, it really frees you up defensively to take some chances, really apply some heat. And that was just a tremendous play to pick that ball off and bring it back for a score. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This taken in at the goal line. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Cleveland offense ready to go. Fresh off the pick six, it's Watson. And this is going to fall to the ground incomplete. That very nearly their fourth pick of the game. Instead, second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Watson. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. The last run got six, now second and four. Off of play action, it's Watson. 
It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, you've got a receiver here who's got one touchdown already in this first quarter, and they were trying to double his pleasure there. Wanted to continue to go to the guys, already gotten into the end zone. But good coverage and make sure that this time it fell incomplete. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. And again, it's Chubb. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Handoff up the middle, Hunt. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. We are in for a good one as we're through one on EA Sports. They'll try the air now with Watson. Wide open receiver complete. And they are able to stop it, but he does take it all the way to the two. 23 yards on the play. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. But I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb taking it in from two yards out. And the Browns are able to cut into that deficit. They go high formation, fullback leads the way for the touchdown. Sort of a lost start, isn't it? It really is, but sometimes when you're able to bring it back and use it against other teams, they're not prepared for it. They haven't seen it in a while, and now you gain an advantage, and we just saw that advantage result in a touchdown. And he'll get in as they're back within a score now. The lead's down to seven. Boy, still a half-plus to play, but it is a two-score game. They're going to go onside kick early. And this one recovered by the hands team for the Ravens. A second quarter onside kick there that failed. Is that something that maybe they had dialed up before this game started? It feels like it, doesn't it? That they thought they had the right situation, you know, and, and the right approach in going after it. Also may signal that they feel like they have the superior team, that they can try these sorts of things and it won't come back and hurt them later. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and that will bring up second down. Off the option, here's Edwards. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And they run with Edwards off the option. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. To throw is Jackson. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Look at this. Middle of the field. A breakaway. Past the 20. And it's a tremendous return as they finally get him at about the 10-yard line. So the turnover forced and a wonderful job on a big return. And how about the convoy that got created to help him get all the way back upfield? I mean, that's the part that people miss on. That's practice. That's worked on. It doesn't just happen in a game and everyone rallies. They discuss it prior to, and everyone knows their role when they create a turnover like that. Now a second down and six. To throw is Watson. Throw right side taken in by the tight end, Bryant. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. This will wind up a loss on the play. Third and seven now. Faking the give. Now Watson. And Joku pulls this one in. He's got it for a Cleveland touchdown. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Browns have got it back to within a score. No surprise there, third and goal. And now before we get to the extra point, remember all touchdowns do have to be confirmed by the replay official. They're 
you're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. They're going to try and run, and he will get into the end zone to cut the lead down to a single point. ready and here we go as he sends this one away no run back here for Duvernay touch back out to the 25 the Raven offense set at the line for this next drive and yeah, last drive obviously not what you're looking for you've got the lead you got to protect the football so in other words someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down in this case though giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. On second down, it's Edwards. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Play action. It's Jackson. Sliding out of the pocket. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. In for the sack, Miles Garrett. And this is a quarterback who's already had success on the ground in this first half, but this time they're able to hem him in. And it's always different when you rush a mobile quarterback as opposed to a guy you know will be right back in the pocket. In this case, you got to make sure the inside pressure and the outside pressure match, and maybe even a second wave to make sure if he squirts free, you've got someone to tackle him. This one incomplete and over everybody. Looked like a clear throwaway. But the officials, they're going to say there's a receiver over there in the area, so no flags, and it's third down. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Finding his way home for the set that time, Taven Bryant. Now, now is a punter, Jordan Stout. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. The offense running out, and they are charged up, ready to go after reaching the end zone on their last drive. And normally I'd warn against getting complacent just because they scored the last time out. But I don't think there's any worries with this group right now. This is a hungry group, and they want to keep building off of their last drive. Now they just want the officials to hurry up and place the ball so they can snap it and get back to work. Second down, here's Chubb again. Not much there, maybe a couple up to the 35. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. Now a first down throw. Watson. He's got Njoku over the middle. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers, but hand. Oh, that's into double coverage and intercepted. 
Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And the Browns are going to have the football here at their own 35-yard line. Thought he had the pick. Flag comes in for P.I., so cancel it out. Interference. Oh, a killer for them. Thought they had a nice play. Instead, they'll be marching off yardage against them. And he's able to work free for about six down to the 18. Hey, it's not the most spectacular play, but I think most teams will take that every single time for the first play of a drive. Begin the series with positive yardage and set yourself up for a very manageable second down. Second down, here's Chubb again. And they'll get him down right around the 16. And they got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more. Now a play fake, and it's Watson. And Joku pulls this one in. He's got it for a Cleveland touchdown. Deshaun Watson with his third touchdown pass of this first half. And the Browns have taken the lead. And man, Charles, talking about zinging something in there. Those gloves, they help with one-handed catches, the fun stuff. Any padding for a rocket like that? One would think so, but I'll guarantee you this, after that throw, his hands will hurt later. Not right now in the moment. He's just feeling good about catching it. Yeah, a little stinger, but a touchdown. New York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. Duvernay going to sit on this in the end zone, so it'll come out to the 25. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Jackson now. That's caught. It's Demarcus Robinson. The 30. 10. 5. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Demarcus Robinson. 71 yards. And the Ravens strike quickly here to tie up the ball game. Tucker able to connect on the extra point. And with it, his guys take the lead here by a point. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. And right now, we've got a little bit of an offensive masterpiece going on. Both sides moving the football, scoring points. It's almost like somebody put the defense on rookie mode in this one. I mean, we haven't even left the first half, Charles, and we're certainly on pace for a shootout. An excellent start for both offenses. The fans have to be enjoying this to seeing all these points go up on the board. As a former defender, you know I'm not enjoying this at all. But right now, both these teams just trading haymakers. Let's see if anyone slips up first. Can anyone counter with a nice little jab and get things going in their direction? Watson, off play action. Blitz coming and down he goes. <laughs> On fourth down, Watson. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And the Ravens get the football back and in great shape. Edwards now on first and ten. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, 
and he got there. Off the option, here's Edwards. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. And now Jackson will look to throw it. This one caught by his tight end, Andrews. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Here's Jackson to throw. And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Miles Garrett. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. Tucker's kick is good. And that'll move their lead up to four now. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six oh, field oh, goals. Oh, Brandon, but, but six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Cleveland offense ready to go. And looking at this situation, Charles, you got more than a minute. You've got all three timeouts. Probably no need to play this safe. So what you're saying is that we're doing a little bit of a mind meld here, aren't we? Because I'm thinking along the same lines as you. This amount of time, don't be compelled to play it too safe. This is a chance to get points on the board. Press it a little bit. And especially since a touchdown here gets you the lead. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now Watson. He's got his receiver, Cooper. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. First down now, but that clock rolling. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson. That's complete to Peoples-Jones. For the second of their timeouts. As the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. From the red zone now, Watson. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Just looking at it from a defensive perspective, when you break the huddle in the red zone, tight end is one of the guys you've got a key on because quarterbacks want the ball in their hands fast in this position, and they want to get it to someone. And in this case, he had the play. They just didn't complete it. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. Here's Watson. He's got his tight end, David Njoku. And the Browns are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. A good pickup, but it will come on what should be the final play in this first half. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. On that snap, he's the hero of his defense after the play he just made. A one-possession game, and his hit kept it exactly that. They give it off here to the tight end, and he's in. Touchdown, Browns. Harrison Bryant. In the final seconds of the first half. And the Browns have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. Extra point by York is up and good. And that gives him a three-point lead. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee, and they'll bring the football out to the 25. No reason to do anything foolish as they'll snap it one more time on first down. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. Well, time is of the essence. We breeze through halftime, and we are ready for the second half. Both these offenses have been in fine form. What will the second half bring us as we are underway in quarter three? They'll elect to bring it out here from the end zone. 
And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result, and he opted for the touchback. The Browns drive about to get started. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half, or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 38. 120 yards rushing for him now as this sensational afternoon continues. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drive. What is it, three plays, three first downs? Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up, they'll get to that end zone real fast. On first down, Watson. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. And they're going to be set up now with the ball at the 13-yard line. So a decent gain there, but not their fourth consecutive first down like they had on the first three plays. You sound almost disappointed there. You want to fire the offensive coordinator on that one or what? <laughs> They've gotten into a rhythm. I thought they were just going to keep going. Well, almost a win for the defense, but if that's your win, you're not doing very well right now. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. Well, look at this, a tight end carry. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. Here's Watson. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield, but when push came to shove, they stood their ground, and now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. Chubb will score. Touchdown, Cleveland. And they would not be denied on the ground, powering it in just one play after they got stopped short. And how about how many tight ends were on the field? Because in today's NFL, we think of the tight end more as a pass catcher. But this group, they tell them you've got to be able to run block to stay on this team. And they committed to it and got it done right there. York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. No run back here for DuVernay. Touchback out to the 25. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now... Urgent's nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And I think the Browns got it. They did. So it's a turnover there on the lost fumble, and this third quarter could not really have started worse. I think that's a great observation because this was a close game at the half. They gave up the touchdown the opening drop. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Jackson's throw into the hands of Andrews. They'll give him four yards there. And third and eight now. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Jackson. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Opted to run for it. The decision a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. Throwing on first down. It's Jackson. They'll set up the screen to Drake. Fancy footwork at midfield. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Yeah. 
And they run with Edwards off the option. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Seven yards there at a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. Now Jackson. Over the middle complete. It's Andrews. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. Then they get 15 more on top of this. Well, Charles, sometimes we talk about the lengths officials sometimes go to to protect star quarterbacks, but that one, that was tough to argue against. Yeah, and I'm sure that everyone's going to say, hey, we're going to administer the penalty the same way for all quarterbacks. But when it's a star back there, even more so are they going to be diligent about throwing the flag. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. Power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They run once more with Edwards. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Now it's Jackson. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's a nine-yard gain and keeps the drive moving. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Again, Jackson will keep it. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. On third down, Jackson toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Tucker's kick is good, and this is back down to a seven-point game. So the response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter, look, just three points, but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that. You needed to answer back with something, even though it's not six. Just enough to send the message that says, hey, we're not going away. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Cleveland offense ready to go. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action. Now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But you know, there was a big time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. <laughs> he would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> Side and it's complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a play. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Following that sack, Watson and the Browns backed up for a third and long. He'll drop to throw. And it's 
incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. And he's not able to get away. He is stopped well, well short of a first down. the middle here's Edwards and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards but no more than that second down yeah I don't know if it's exactly a win-win but if you're on offense you'll take that kind of a run all right it was kind of stacked up found a little bit of yardage and frankly they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense the playbook is still open for the coordinator the quick slant good for a first down a gain of 12. Jackson going to keep it running right. And he'll lose yardage here. Going down back at the 28. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Jackson. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Now it's Jackson. And that will be incomplete. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Tucker's kick is good. And that'll bring him back within four. So give him three on that drive. You know, normally you'd say, we'll take it. But the way points have been flying around, it feels like a little bit of a letdown. Yeah, you just have to wonder, are field goals going to be enough? Because as you pointed out, the way touchdowns have been scored, does kicking a field goal actually put you at a disadvantage the rest of the way? The Browns set and ready to go on offense. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10. At their own 26. Watson's throw taken in by Cooper here. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Up the middle, it's Chubb. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Watson now to throw. And this one almost intercepted. Far too loose with the football. Nearly a fourth pick of the ball game. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. They are going for it. Here's Watson. Looking left side, he's got it complete. And he's going to pick up the Browns first down as this defense cannot come up with a play that they need. In fact, they surrender a big chunk, 17 yards there on fourth down. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Linebacker Patrick Queen bringing him down. That time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage, but you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. And that falls to the ground incomplete. Well, a nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. He's going to take another shot here. And this one incomplete. And another throw that really could have been, maybe should have been intercepted. That would have been number four. Instead, it's fourth down. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. And that'll make this a seven-point game. 
These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their history. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Here's Jackson. And that's going to be caught. It's James Prochet. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And third and one now. They'll try and run for the first with Edwards. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. They get five, and it will go ahead and move the chains. Jackson, options out left. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. Throwing is Jackson. And yeah, this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third down. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on here to punt it away. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Browns will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. And he finds enough of an opening to get this one back up to his 20. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Second down, here's Chubb again. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Oh, they go with a tight end carry. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. And Chubble trying to middle here. And some room to maneuver. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 166 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. They run it again with Chubb. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Now it's Watson. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. It's Chuck Clark picking it off. And the Ravens are right back in this football game. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. The interception sets them up with an opportunity to erase this fourth quarter deficit. And this series could very well determine our outcome. He'll pick up seven there on the first down keeper. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. 
If they get a game-changing score on this drive, it's going to be because of plays like that. That run was pure heart. Took it himself, found a way to reset the downs, and advance the ball. Jackson running again, and he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa. Big impact play, a tackle for loss. On second and 12, Jackson has got his man. It's Andrews. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run right after the catch. Robinson's got it. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 23. A third down conversion with a strong gain of 14. And they run the option here on first and 10. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Off the option, here's Edwards. They'll get a couple yards back, but not more than that. They'll be left with 12 yards to go on third down. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. From the gun, Jackson. Oh, no, he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Browns. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, we know he's got the speed to get downfield, Charles, but there's the negative side, a little loose with the football that time. And that's normal, especially when you have his type of talent because you feel like you're into the open field and maybe you don't feel the people who are around you or closing in. All quarterbacks have to do extra ball security drills with the way the game's played now because defenses, they attack the football as much as they attack the runner. complete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Well, he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. And this is caught. Amari Cooper. And he is going to have the Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Hunt will try going up the middle. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it. But what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that will work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? They'll try to run for the first down with Hunt. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. A gain of four that time as the drive will continue. Watson. And that is taken in by Njoku. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 25 yards that time. And now they're in the hurry up. On first down, Felton. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Well, at this stage, that's exactly what you want offensively. Good run on first down. Stay in bounds. Keep that clock rolling. And look at that play chart that the play caller has in his hands right now. That's what you got to focus in on because. That's divided up by sections. And right now, he's looking at that four-minute offense section. What running plays do we have to bleed down the clock and take care of the football? Right now, they're executing really well. On third down, here's Hunt. And boy, he is very close to a first down. But from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave him with some options here on fourth and inches. They're going to run this with a tight end. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. 
So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They're not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. From the 9, second and 5. They run again with Hunt. And he will maneuver his way down to about the 7. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. A carry here for Hunt. And he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Two touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. Extra point by York is up and good. And the lead now up to 14. That drive, a long one, spanning 15 plays. And it's finished off with a five yard touchdown run. Duvernay going to sit on this in the end zone, so it'll come out to the 25. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Last time out, remember, they fumbled the football. That led to the touchdown. And, Charles, they were in the red zone, so that's a backbreaker. they got to try to pick up the pieces here on this drive. Yeah, and I actually started to do the math here, so be patient with me. 12-point swing is the way I calculate it because not only did they drop the ball in the red zone, they watched the opponent score a touchdown right after that. So their goal, have a drive here and try and get some of those points back. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. He'll take this to the other side midfield before going out of bounds. That one covers 29 yards, first down. Jackson leaves it with Edwards on the draw. And a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. Jackson trying to hustle his unit up quickly to the line of scrimmage. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And the Browns are going to take possession here at their own 16-yard line. Well, it wasn't always pretty, but the interception there, that means that they should get out of here with a victory. Yeah, this is not a game that they're going to preserve for posterity on defense. But they did finish it off, didn't they? They did make the winning play to close things out. They'll take that one and head to the locker room. The Browns in victory formation now as they take the knee. And with a third and 13 here, the defense in a dime look. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. Well, this was a fun one today. If you like points, a lot of them went on the board. Both offenses were clicking. Charles, these defenses, meanwhile, have a little something to clean up before their next contest. Yeah, neither end zone had a stop sign in it, did they? I mean, for both sides, visit it. And with frequency.
Not fun to be a defensive player, but on the offensive side of the ball, those guys had a blast. One team came away with a victory, even better for them. Tonight, from Highmark Stadium in Orchard Park, New York, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. see Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills taking on Tua Tungavailoa and the Miami Dolphins. Winter is just around the corner as you get a look at Highmark Stadium just south of Buffalo, New York. Tonight on this fine Thursday night, we've got a good one in store between the Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills. And we are underway in Buffalo. Fielded just outside the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. Throwing the start here is Tua. Now a 